Big, big exciting day. What is the big news? Can we say <laughs> <laughs> No more a secret. It is the day we announced the launch of Atherton Bikes. Hey everyone, Andy here from Single Track Magazine, and I'm here with the Addertons because uh, you've got some pretty big news. Yeah, we have got big news. Yeah. What is the big news? Can we say this? <laughs> No more a secret. I'm quite glad. Uh, I'm quite glad of that. This is a pretty huge story. It's. Are you excited? Atherton bikes. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are excited. I yeah. mean, like you say, it was. There's been a lot of speculation. We've all been kind of. Everyone's been trying to guess what we're doing, and you know, we've been working hard over the off season trying to trying to get this up and running. But, you know, to have the chance to to start our own bike company and 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 launch the. <laughs> that we're racing World Cups on our own bikes is yeah, it's it's pretty incredible. <laughs> I mean, it's always nerve-wracking to race, but to have a bike with your name on it as you hit, you know, the, the World Cup circuit, I mean, how are you going to feel, you think? Well, this is pretty surreal. Uh, it's kind of the first, you know, saying it, saying it out loud and saying oh. Athen Bikes and, yeah. you know, it's, it's pretty crazy. And uh, it's kind of, it, yeah, it feels a bit surreal. And I think we all uh, just, you know, for us, racing and riding on, on our own bikes has always been a dream, so you know, for it finally to be happening is pretty mad. I mean, the big question is, uh, why now? I mean, why have you decided to start your own uh, company now? Because, I mean, Atherton Racing was back in 2003, was it? Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, you've been on the World Cup circuit for a while. You've developed bikes for other teams. So, you know, why this year? The, the nature of how you work with uh, when you're racing World Cups and you're sponsored by a bike company, you know, you, you partner up with a company, you, you start developing that bike with them, you know, you, you kind of work really hard to to say what you want, what you don't like, what needs to be done, so you get that race bike as, as refined as possible. And then, you know, you race that bike for as long as the term with a sponsorship is going, and then, it, you know, if you move sponsors, it starts again. Mm. So, like you say, we've done it quite a lot, we've done it quite a few times, we've all raced World Cups for a long time, so we're very good at knowing what we wanted, and, you know, it's always been on the back burner, us just talking about how nice it would be to, to be doing this, but developing a bike that we were doing ourselves. And, yeah. you know, we got to the point where we were lucky enough to be in the situation where we could do that. And, you know, we had options and, and partners and these opportunities to do it. And, you know, for us, it was a no brainer. I mean, we've been so lucky to work with, with some amazing companies and, you know, have the opportunity to develop bikes. And this kind of just felt like the natural next step, really. Dan, uh, how did the company develop and who are you working with for this, for Atherton Bikes? Um, I guess the partnership kind of started with Ed, really, um, back when we rode for Giant 2006, I think it was. Um, and it was actually Ed's first race and Dan Brown's first race as well. And um, it was a national track called Rugog, which is actually where the bike park is now, right next to that. So it kind of... Uh, a meeting of all three worlds and uh, yeah over the years you know me and Ed kept talking and we always kind of dreamed of, of building something together and I think Ed kind of went off his own way and 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 formed a company called Robot with um, with Ben and Andy and a few other guys that he'd been to university with and uh, you know they were so kind of almost geeky in their approach to it you know they're just their kind of attention to detail on every single aspect of the bike was was amazing and for us to see that and see where it had taken that brand was was pretty inspiring you know and I think over the years they they definitely approached it as engineers rather than anything else and so yeah I think <coughs> the brand did well but I think we could we kind of thought you know maybe we could we could put a different slant on it and, and come at it from a bit more of a marketing angle and a bit more of a race angle. And like G said, you work with big companies for so long and you develop stuff with them. And we thought, you know, could we potentially do that for ourselves? So uh, we know Ed's involved. So we know uh, additive manufacturing and, you know, those processes, carbon fiber bonded to titanium, that we know all that's involved with the bike. But who else is involved in bringing Adderton bikes to market? Well, the engineers were a big part of it, you know. Ed and his guys, they were they were a real key part, and and they were they were a key process in getting the bike up and running. But to get the whole company up and running, we needed the rest of the guys involved. You know, the guys at Atherton Racing weren't enough to do that, and 
So we've partnered up with Piers Linney, who's been a massive help and he's been really strong. In... Is this the guy from Dragon's Den, is it? <laughs> this is the guy from Dragon's Den, yeah. So he knows his, he knows his stuff and also is a, a, a real fan of the mountain bike world and, and rides himself. So it's been great having him in, involved and he's done a lot for us. Um, also Dave Weigel, uh, the bike's running the DW Link, which has been a massive attraction for us. You know, it's from the from the first pedal of it, you really feel how that link works. It's a really impressive bit of design, and you know it's it's one of the reasons why we can come to this with a, a relatively short period of time to develop the bike and, and be confident that it's going to be ready for the World Cup circuit. So we've touched on the fact that the Atherton downhill bikes use uh, an additive um, manufacturing process, but Dan, could you explain what that is to people who aren't quite sure what it is? Well, additive manufacturing is basically more commonly known as 3D printing. Um, and it's basically high-end printing, but with a titanium powder um, done all in an enclosed system in a machine. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, the additive manufacturing process produces a base plate of lugs. Um, they're all built on, a, on kind of one block, and then the guys take those out, they clean them up, and then they bond a carbon tube into a double lap shear joint. Mm -hmm. And... Um, using a, uh, a high-end glue and then that's kind of all assembled as a bike basically um it's quite hard you know getting getting the right tubes in the right place and being able to slot them all in but you know ed is ed and those guys they've got so much experience with this you know from 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 aerospace to you know formula one they've got a huge wealth of knowledge and you know those guys are definitely the guys to have on board with this. With Ed involved in the additive manufacturing process, I guess there's going to be stock sizes of each bike, but will there also be custom options too? Yeah, there'll definitely be custom options on the high-end um, frames that we're doing, but you know, part of the reason with starting our own brand and coming at it from a World Cup perspective is that we've got those benchmarks in the bag, you know, what G rides for his winning bike what Rach rides for her winning bike and so the the public have got a benchmark almost to work from because you know you you give them a blank canvas and that's a pretty daunting thing yeah. to try and come up with your own bike so they can change the parameters a little bit of of, of what these guys ride but yeah ultimately that will be available on the on the high-end stuff yeah and I think you know the thing about Afton bikes is that it is this kind of cutting edge technology is 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 customization you know so theoretically someone can come and order exactly the bike they want you know the size the geometry all these things that are unique to that person mm -hmm. um and that's where we want to go with it you know that's what we want to offer people rachel could you tell me a little bit of how the bike rides other than it's amazing it's the best thing ever <laughs> can we have some details about how the bike actually rides well i mean it's not when I first got on it, um, I couldn't believe how how good it is. You know, you, obviously I'm going to say that, but it, it was it blew my mind. The first thing I did was pedal down like a flat, kind of rocky straight into the kind of downhill track, and and I couldn't believe how well it pedaled. It accelerated so quickly, so efficiently. Just you know, got up to speed, and and it was I was like, oh my god, you know, it was amazing. And it's such a fun bike. It really it makes you feel like confident and I think we all kind of have the same feedback. It's such a fun bike to ride. It makes you feel like you can go faster, faster, faster. You know, you, you go in as fast as you can and, and yet it wants more. It wants to be pushed harder and harder and, and it feels incredible. It's, it's such a planted, it's such a grounded bike and, you know, that's the first few rides and I was really, really blown away by it. So, G, can you give me any specifics about the uh, Atherton downhill bike? Yeah, well, it's a prototype, you know, that's the main thing. It's, it's, it's one of the first bikes we've made. It's literally the kind of the, the mule we've created. We've, we've been working with the guys for quite a long time saying, this is what we want, this is what we don't want, this is what we like to ride, and, and this is the kind of, this is the outcome. Um, and it's a pretty impressive uh, first ride, really, you know, for a, for a first prototype, it's, it's doing the job pretty well. You know, we've geared it around that kind of, that World Cup spec, so, you know, quite a slack head angle, nice long back end, um, things that you kind of, you bounce around the car park and the bike feels a bit sluggish, but when you're up to speed on yeah. a World Cup track, absolutely charging, you know, you, you start to appreciate it, yeah. And like Rach said, it's a fun bike to ride, and, and these are all the things that kind of, those, those small specifics that 
a, a small change here, a small change there can make the difference between a bike feeling a bit twitchy and a bit nervous to suddenly the bike being full of life, giving you that confidence. And, and really, this is what that bike does. So, I mean, I know uh, we can't show the full bike here, but the bike that I'm looking at now... It looks good. Yeah, it looks really, really good. <laughs> but um, will we see any, like, radical changes from this to the bike you first race this season? Or is it pretty much going to look like this, but like you say, just a few tweaks here and there? It's a 29er. It'll look like this. And, you know, a radical, a radical change to us is like a degree change on the head angle okay. or like 10 mil on the back end or 5 mil on the bottom bracket. But I imagine, you know, to the majority of people, they're going to look at it and it's going to look very similar. So, you know, I think that wasn't always the case. We could have got this first prototype and it could have been this ugly, awkward beast that needed a lot of work done. But, you know, even from the first few rides out on it, straight away, we could tell we were close to the mark. Yeah, I'll have to say, like when it, you rolled it out to us, I was like, that's not what I was expecting. That it looks very finished. I've got to say, it looks finished. Well, I think if you tell someone you've started a bike company and you've made the first prototype bike, <laughs> you're work. expecting, you know, <laughs> bits of scaffold, yeah. bits of sellotape. I was looking for the airfix bits. <laughs> <laughs> but like that's we said, sick. you know, the guys we've been working with have been doing this for a long time. You know, this is, this is our first time doing this, but it's not theirs. You know, they've made all the mistakes that you make. They've made all those errors that you start when you start a bike company and, you know, they've made them many times over. So, you know, they're coming to this with that vast wealth of knowledge that has allowed us to get so close to the mark on the first bike. Where are the Atherton downhill bikes going to be manufactured? Uh, all made in the UK, you know, on the on the downhill bike, that additive manufacturing, it needs to stay, stay close to home, you know, it needs to stay with the engineers we trust, with that process that we really know, you know, it's not something you can just outsource to someone that's going to do it much cheaper because, you know, the quality of the product is so important to us. And, and the technology behind it, you know, we know the group of people doing it. We know the guys really well and, and we know that they are good at what they do. So, you know, keeping it in the UK is, is very important to us. Okay, so we're all excited. We all want an Atherton downhill bike, the same bike that you'll be racing and probably winning on this year. So when can I give you my money? Yeah, I mean, the idea is to, to have the bikes ready to come to market uh, as, as sometime this year, as soon as possible, ideally. Um, so, you know, some point during the, during this, the season, we're going to have the bikes available, available for people to buy and, and to get on and ride. So, yeah, watch this space. When I want to order one, where would I go to buy one? Well, we think that the customization and, you know, the technology, the whole thing about the, the Atherton bikes is, is kind of pushing it more um, to directly to the consumer. So we're going to be selling directly from the Atherton bikes website, which, you know, for us is a massive, a massive plus, you know, straight to consumer, straight that one to one chat with the, t with the technicians, with the engineers, really getting involved in, in the bike that you're buying. And, and that's kind of you know, a massive plus for us. It's, and actually, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, with such an advanced bike and everything, you don't want any mixed messages. So to come straight to you guys, get the correct answers there and then, it just, it's just better for the customer, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And like G and, and Dan said, you know, the, the team around the bike, you know, Athlon Bikes has is, is got some amazing people involved. And the, you basically buying into that knowledge, you know, you, you, those guys are available for, for you to talk to. You you might get one of us on the end of the phone if, if, if we're not at a race. So, you know, anything could happen when you ring that number. That'd be pretty cool. Another added reason to buy an Atherton bike, eh? Reason not to. <laughs> um, so what about availability, Dan? Uh, is it only, are these bikes, the Atherton bikes, only going to be available in the UK or can anyone in the world buy one? No, absolutely not. You know, they'll be available all over the world and I, I guess that's coming from the racing angle again, you know. We'd, we race all over the world and, you know, there's talk of doing some races in Chile and stuff and some street races and trying to really get this bike out there and get it into the public eye. Well, I think that's what drew us to starting our own brand in the first place, really. You know, we've got a bike park opening this year and for me, it was really important to turn up at the bike park and see people on our frames. You know, that's that's the reason I, that that I feel we, we started a brand, really. It's not about producing a high-end brand that only a few select people can afford, you know. Mm. I want to see as many as I can on the uplift, you know, because that's the bread and butter. That's where I feel the real industry is, is in the car parks of the bike park, you know. 
that's where people talk about the bike they talk about how they ride they talk with their mates about you know what happened that weekend and for me that's that's mountain biking you know that's what's real about it yeah i'm i'm, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be talking about atherton bikes so uh yeah i mean we can't wait to see it we can't wait to see you guys racing and uh yeah good luck Congratulations and good cool. luck. Thank you. Thanks, and man. happy birthday as well. This is oh, a great yeah. birthday yeah. gift for you. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs>